Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Macon Bibb County Commission meeting. Today is Tuesday, February the 7th, and the time is now two, now time, uh, time is now 6 o'clock. <laughs> Ooh, that's easy for me to say. All right. We're going to begin our meeting like we always do by officially welcoming everyone here and calling this meeting to order. And that will be followed by our prayer tonight. Our prayer tonight uh, will be led by the asso associate pastor, Teresa Edwards, from Vineville Methodist Church. Is she here tonight? Oh, good to see you. How you doing? If you'll step up to that microphone. And those of you that can and will, please stand and bow your heads, and we'll have the uh, prayer, and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray together. God of all community, God of our community, on this night of important work on behalf of our city, how appropriate it is that we pause and turn to you. You made us all beautifully created in your image. Now you call us to come together as individuals that in our common work we might find unity and improve this place we love and call home. Give us discernment to see the needs around us and resources to meet them. Sharpen our vision so we might be aware of the ones who so often go unnoticed and underserved. May our hands reach out in love, our words build bridges of care, our generosity feed hungry people and hungry hearts, and our vision be one of hope that we might become a community that shines with unity. Tonight, good work awaits us. May the Spirit bind us together with one purpose and deep commitment to move toward our goals with joy and vigor. We yield ourselves to you, O oh God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. At this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance uh, with the Cub Scout Troop 170. And they will be uh, presented at the microphone for by Brooke Smith. If y'all will come forward. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, great job. <laughs> great job, now we've got four presentations for tonight and we'll begin with our presentation recognizing Cub Scout Troop 170 and that presentation will be done by Mayor Pro Tem Seth Clark. <laughs> So guys, this is Troop 170. They've been at City Hall for about an hour, hour and almost an hour and a half now, learning about conservation, about what the county does uh, in general, what the county commission does, what a county commissioner is, and what the mayor does. Um, we have uh, learned about the history of the building, the history of the county, uh, the history of the county before the county, and we've uh, we visited the old municipal jail downstairs. So. Uh, they're here for um, uh, to learn a little bit about more about, about what their county government does and how um, their passion for stewardship should our passion for stewardship should reflect theirs. So I think we were able to learn as much from their questions and their passion for their community as I hope they were from uh, from listening to us and uh, my colleagues on the county commission and the mayor today. So uh, this is Troop 170, guys. Thank you for your service to your community and uh, stick with it. We need as many Eagle Scouts as we can possibly have. Thank you for, uh, for being here. Thank you. At this time, we got a presentation and proclamation 
recognized in February as Black History Month by Commissioner Elaine Lucas. That was great. That was really great. Um, at this time, um, we'd like to call on all of the members of the M.L. King Jr. Board, if you come up front, those who are here, unless some had previous engagements. Okay. The members that we have here, Mayor, would you join us? Um, we have Dr. Henry Ficklin, who before he, he's been involved with the ML King uh, board for a long, long time, since its in inception, and is just a noted civil rights uh, person in the community. All right, this new, new bride here. <laughs> <laughs> I like saying, <laughs> I like saying that, yeah, but um, Sharice Stevens Merriweather, I got the whole thing, um, she is, uh, although she's a new member, relatively speaking, she has been involved in community uh, events for a long, long time, um, and, and our, my sister, <laughs> uh, June Jordan O'Neill, and everybody knows June uh, as the um, person who um, shepherds the Mentors Project, uh, the Mentors Project, and she's involved. You, it's nothing to see June walking around with her, um, her gold um, and her heels and lugging some furniture to help a, a family. That's, that's June, June O'Neill. And so, um, and of course, our mayor has been very, very supportive. Uh, of, he's at Sofficio of all of these different boards and authorities. So he supports the work uh, that um, served to accentuate throughout the year the life and works of Dr. King. And so uh, at this time, uh, it's my honor um, to read the proclamation. I'm going to hand it uh, to the mayor uh, for uh, to present to the ML King Board. Are there others here? We we had invited the NAACP and some other organizations to be here. Um, this is a proclamation from the office of the mayor, Macon Bibb County, Georgia. Whereas in 1926, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who worked in Kentucky coal mines as a child and was the son of former slaves, proposed and launched a week-long celebration of the individuals and occasions having a significant impact on African American history in America. And whereas Dr. Woodson chose the month of February to conduct this commemoration because the birthdays of two men whose actions have significantly affected African Americans in this uh, country are in February, namely Frederick Douglass, the gifted orator, writer, and statesman who was a tireless advocate of the anti-slavery movement, and Abraham Lincoln, who signed the Emancipation Proclamation and is considered to be one of America's greatest presidents. And whereas in 1976, the commemoration was extended from a week-long event to the entire month of February. And whereas during the month of February 2023, across the United States of America and throughout the Macon Bibb County community, observances are held to increase public awareness of the importance of black history and the numerous contributions that African Americans have made in support of their country and local communities. And whereas, 
not only during the month of February 2023, but throughout the remainder of the year. It is important that we reach out in seeking to understand one another in a peaceful and loving way. Now, therefore, the mayor, the Honorable Lester M. Miller, does hereby proclaim the month of February 2023 as Black History Month in Macon Bibb County, and all citizens are urged to join him in honoring the many contributions made by Black Americans throughout this region and to participate in the many educational events honoring the contributions of black Americans. In witness whereof, he has set his hand and caused the seal of Macon Bibbs Consolidated Government to be affixed. It's my honor to present this to you, Mayor, for presentation to the ML King Board. June has some uh, shirts for each of you from the ML King uh, board after you take this picture. have the picture of Dr. King on the front and on the back there's some words that I hope everyone will live by this entire year and throughout the rest of their lives because very very important loyal determined non-judgmental courageous kind empathetic freedom leadership sacrifice faith benevolent legacy love and justice Dr. King stood for all these things, and we hope that you will all remember them like I will every day. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, we have a presentation and proclamation recognizing February also as National Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month. Thank you for making that request, and I think it's a very worthy cause. And at this time, we'll have uh, Mayor Pro Tem Seth Clark uh, do the proclamation. A proclamation of the Office of the Mayor of Macon Bibb County, Georgia. Whereas it's estimated that one in three adolescent girls in the United States is a victim of some form of physical, emotional, or verbal abuse from a dating partner, a figure that would ex that would far exceed victimiza victimization rates for other types of violent affecting youth. Violence affecting you, excuse me. Whereas youth who experience physical violence in a dating relationship are reportedly more likely to use drugs and alcohol, attempt suicide, and carry patterns of abuse into future relationships. And whereas females between the ages of 16 and 24 are reportedly more vulnerable to intimate partner violence than any other age group, experiencing abuse at almost triple the national average. And whereas it is estimated that only 33% of teens who are in an abusive relationship tell anyone about it. And whereas <clears throat> a vast majority of parents either believe teen dating violence is not a significant issue or acknowledge that they do not know if it is. And whereas by providing young people with education about healthy relationships and changing their attitudes away from supporting violence to embracing mutual respect, we can reduce the level and intensity of teen dating violence. Now, therefore, I, Lester M. Miller, do hereby proclaim the month of February as National Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month in Macon Bibb County and urge all citizens to respond and to work toward ending teen dating violence by supporting their community's efforts to empower teens to develop healthier relationships. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the consolidated government to be affixed on the seventh day of February 2023 
signed by Lester M. Meller, mayor of Macon Bibb County. And it's an honor to be joined by you, Ms. Uh, Dr. Cisse, for being up here. Uh, thank you for all you, Andrea, what everybody does for the Mental Health Matters community to, um, to spread awareness about uh, dating, teen dating violence and, uh, and what you do for uh, young people across this whole community. Thank you. And thank you. Next, you will have the recognition of Macon Bibb County Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion graduates uh, by Mr. Fred Broom. I'm not sure if he's here tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there, Fred. Thank you for being here tonight, and thank you for everything that you continue to do uh, across the state of Georgia. And uh, at this time, we also have Commissioner Virgil Watkins, who will be uh, had not only participated in this event, but he can help you out as well. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Broom, for being here, and and I'll uh, leave it with you. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Commission members. Uh, my name is Freddie Broom. I'm Director of Equity and Inclusion from Georgia Municipal Association. We're excited to be here tonight um, to pre make a special presentation to your members of your Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee. Um, actually, this is the first uh, time that we've been able to offer our new program to a city that has decided that they were dedicated to finding ways to embrace diversity, equity, inclusion within their organizations. And so we were able to, thanks to Cerise, we were able to come to the city um, and we spent almost three months here training your internal committee members on the importance of what is diversity, what is equity, what is inclusion, and what is belonging, and how to be ambassadors for the programs and the city as well. Um, so we had a total of think 15 that went through the program. So tonight we have some certificates that we also want to present for them for su successfully completing the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee Training Program. And this program is a certificate that we have that we're presenting and is signed by our CEO, Executive Director, uh, Mr. Larry Hansen, as well as myself. We have uh, Lauren Henwick. Hartwick, I'm sorry. Kevin Poss. Robert McCord. Rodney Miller. <laughs> Carrie McDuffie. <laughs> Todd Allgood. Commissioner Virgin Watkins. <laughs> and I say this one for last um, because a lot of times when you have a good coordinator, it makes my job a lot easier. And so Sharice did an outstanding job of coordinating everything, making sure everyone had lunch, and coordinating, contacting with me when we had to get messages out to the community members as well. So 
I want to present this one to Sharice Stevens, and your new name is Mary Weather. Mary <laughs> Thank you for helping make the program successful as well. Again, thank you all for participating. I just wanted to take a few moments and provide a little context for um, for the what and the why th these guys participated in. Um, about a year ago, uh, Macon Bibb County County Commission passed a equity forward resolution um, confirming our commitment to make sure that we are providing diverse and inclusive services throughout our county. Um, I'm also a, what they call an E Pluribus Unum Fellow, and I represent Macon Bibb County in conjunction with our 13 other co uh, communities uh, throughout the Southeast that are dedicated to diversity and inclusion uh, conversations with our, throughout our community. Um, they believe that direct conversation is the way forward through these tough type of t types of issues, and that the inequities that we're facing is what's holding us back from being the greatest that we can be as a community and as a country. Uh, so these directors were able to go through this training, again, through the Georgia Embrace Institute. Um, and we thank them for participating, as well as GMA Embrace being a part of it. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Watkins, for your, your, your work in this area and following through with the diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Broom, uh, for all that you do. Uh, Freddie is, uh, didn't say a whole lot about himself, but he is traveling the state of Georgia all over uh, to make sure that we get out uh, the word. The Georgia Municipal Association is dedicated to making sure that we have uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, not just a name only, but implementation. So he is largely part of uh, this program, and thank you for your service and traveling all across the state to make sure that the training is done. And certainly we look forward to doing that and being a part of our community. So thank you for being here tonight as well. Uh, let's give everybody a hand one more time. Now we're gonna move on to the approval of the minutes. The approval of the minutes was 6A, the approval of the minutes from January 17th, 2023 regular meeting, regular commission meeting. At this time, I entertain a motion for approval. Motion. Got a motion uh, by, who's that? Wilder. Commissioner Wilder, second by Commissioner Tillman. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. We don't have any public comments on the agenda items. We do have some on non-agenda items that we'll get through in just a moment. Uh, we'll move on to consent agenda. The consent agenda tonight is items A through Y, with the exception, exception of item E, which in pre-commission was removed from uh, the, uh, was tabled during the pre-commission, so we'll not be voting on that one. So this time now, I'll make a motion to approve items A through Y on the consent agenda as previously passed, except for item E. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion by Commissioner Wynn, do we have a second? Second, second by Commissioner Tillman. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. Thank you very much unanimously. We're going to move on to, there's no need to go into executive session, but I do believe we have one item on non-agenda, um, public comments on non-agenda items. And this time I'd like to call forward Mr. William C. Amica. Thank you for being here tonight. And if you'll go up to that, that microphone there, uh, he is a resident of Macon Bibb County and he would like to uh, speak tonight on false arrest, perjury violation, the oath of office, uh, and, um, sir, you have five minutes to, uh, to uh, speak to this. This is not an interaction between this commission, but we would appreciate you being here tonight, and we're here for you for up to five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very, very humble. Uh, I've been locked up for prepaid gas. The officer went and lied on me. Been locked up. Possession of marijuana with intent to strip without a search warrant, without an indictment, how I was seen, head prosecutor. Martha Christian gave me 10 years without a search warrant, without an indictment. Councilman Tillman was the head of NAACP when I took this to him. Ignored the fact. Had a conversation, Councilman, Commissioner Watkins being very respectful about the prepaid gas, everything come out. After the rug been swept up on them, but this is what the state of Georgia gave me. In this bag right here. 
He asked me about David Davis, the sheriff. I done went out there and filed a complaint. Nobody called me back. They said, I'm the liar. Paperwork, paper trail. Nobody knew I'm around to rise me. Went to prison, 10 years, 7.3 ounces of marijuana. I had a $12 bond. Superior Court Judge, Martha Christian. And I stand here. If I do another 16 years, I got to keep doing it, but I'm not going to let nobody keep locking me up. I didn't do it. Kelly Burke, head district attorney for the House and County Judicial System. I got paperwork. False arrest. You take the Brad Muse, Camp in Lydon, Erica Wolfe, Chief Magistrate. Paperwork. Never seen a search warrant for marijuana. Never seen an indictment for marijuana. But Martha Christian, Neil Harrison, gave me 10 years. Howard Sim, head DA. First black man to stay at the Georgia Building or a bond for the last 16 years for Houston County. I'm not angry. Again, I'm very humble. I appreciate y'all letting me tell my story. But I've been on an oral bond for Houston County for the last 16 years for armed robbery and burglary. I didn't do it. Four attorneys was given to me. BF County. Tried to find my attorney. March Christmas, he's going to be doing a fine job to me. The district attorney, marijuana charge, most serious than armed robbery. That's what he tell my lawyer sitting in front of me in the court down there. Yeah, I'm routed, but I, 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 I weathered the storm. I'm still going to now tell this story. What they lied. Never seen a search warrant. Never seen an indictment. Everybody got on the tent to perjure. You know how I feel to be handcuffed? With a gag in your mouth? I couldn't speak. That's why I'm speaking now. I'm free. Prepaid gas? For real. I called you. Spoke with you. I had to call another counselor. He had to pull over the side of the road because I broke down crying. Depression, anxiety, humiliation. Somebody come to your house going through your girlfriend on the clothes. I ain't had no search want to come in my house. Everybody embarrassing me. Everybody making jokes. Boy, that's some real, some real police work. Some real police work. Never seen a search warrant. Never seen anybody. But they gave me 10 years. Be a kind of courthouse. I'm here to fight. I'm not getting, I'm not, day one, I'm not taking this. I got the initial report. The victim described a white man. I'm black, but you still go down into the courtroom, tell this lady that I did, or whoever down there, that I did an arm rub. But I got paperwork. The initial report, making backdoor deals, Kelly Burke, same individual told you this, Eric Adams, came up here and did arm rub. One minute. Rob the lady downtown. Thank you, Mel. Mr. Mel. <coughs> I'm in prison. Nothing to do with it. DA down there tell me to sue him. The new head DA. Sue him. I'm on an OR bond. Kelly Burke, Jason Ashley. I got paperwork. He told me I got pending charges 16 years later, but they got on black robe, then they judge prosecuting misconduct, malicious prosecution. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm here to. Violation of oath of office. Send me to prison without a search warrant without an indictment. Never heard of. Got it. Ain't going nowhere. I spoke with you. When you was in that vest president, like a gentleman, and you ignored me. <laughs> Prepaid gas. It was 2020. But with you again, you ignored me. Excuse me, sir. Thank you, 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 thank I, you. I appreciate it. I gave you some. But I'm looking for something to be done about this. Thank you for being here tonight. All right. At this time, that's all the public comments we have, and there's no other items on the agenda uh, for tonight. We do not have a need to go to executive session. Uh, I do want to let commissioners know there's a uh, press conference on this Friday. I believe it's at 10:30 concerning the next Clean Streets Matters countywide cleanup. Uh, you'll get some information uh, from Ms. Ross on that. For specifics, if you can be there, we'd love to have you. If not, we understand that you have uh, your day jobs to do, uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Remember, next Tuesday we're going to talk about roads uh, and the 2022, 23, 24 roads programs that we talked about before with all the rankings of the roads. Uh, we'll talk about some cameras uh, that we'll have coming in a presentation that will be done 
and also we'll have the mid-year adjustment. So several items on the agenda uh, for next Tuesday, which is uh, Valentine's Day at nine o'clock. So until our time brings us together, we'll see you here uh, either on Friday or until, uh, yeah, we have a date on February the 14th. This meeting is hereby adjourned.